So I really just been doing it uh, independently for about, I think it's probably my third third month, fourth month. I feel like I'm ready to do it. I've been doing some JV, and I had a little mentor that found me because I uh, then uh, added myself to a couple of the Facebook groups, and then uh, it's a, a, a website called Connected Investors from uh, a lot of investors all around. So I just put myself in a little bit of those and just been watching a lot. And then somebody uh, um, recommended me to wholesale toolbox off of uh, the, the uh, group, and I just been going since then. But then I got the JV. I got a uh, somebody had contacted me saying they had a JV deal. I told them that I was a little amateur, and they said it was all right. So they sent me a, a NCN uh, uh, NCN disclosure agreement. Mm. Uh, a non-circumvention, non-disclosure agreement. And I've been watching some videos over it, and it's really just so I want, basically like an addendum, I guess, so I want to go out and try to go back to them or something. Oh, okay. So did you sign it already or what? No, I ain't signed nothing. So they have a house under contract, and they're trying to you're trying to find a buyer to help them out? Exactly. Oh, okay. So do do they have the house under contract? Yeah, they, they um yeah, yeah. So did you see that or they just told you that? I read the uh contract. He sent it to me in my DocuSign. Oh, okay. So the original contract between them and the original seller. Oh no, I didn't see that. Exactly. They never show that. <laughs> Cause I got all the houses under contract. <laughs> if I tell you I do, right? Okay, okay. No, they didn't show me that. Yeah, well, you know, I mean, you can do that non-disclosure. It, it, the, I don't, I mean, I'm not an attorney, so I can't tell you any legal advice, but, um, you know, just take a look at it. If it's, you know, if it's just for that one particular deal or is it just some blanket thing they sent you, just anything they send you? I really think it's a blanket thing because they tried to lowball me. I told them 64, they said 70, 30. First, they said 80, 20. Wow. So they want 80 and they want to give you 20% to find a buyer. Yeah, but I talked to my 70 30. I just took because it was oh, shoot, my first go. So I'm like, all right, I could just take this look and I like it to be successful out of this. Then I'm sure I know I'm going down the right path. So they have a house under contract. How long have they had it for? I don't even know. They didn't give me all that because the first day they didn't want to give me the address. Or nothing. He just told me because I'm out of Michigan. So I asked them, I was on Craigslist and I was watching the video showing me how to look for uh, JV deals. And I seen this property, and then I contacted them, and they really uh, they didn't want to give me the uh, address, but they just really told me it was West Lansing. And I said, that's not enough. And they just told me the zip code. And then they said, See, oh, that'd be the thing, man. They, I mean, I'm not saying it's good or bad, but they could send you down a rabbit hole. You'll be just digging and digging and looking and find out it ain't even no deal, because you don't even know if it's a deal or not. I don't want to I, I, and, and the thing, you know, about, you know, a lot of this wholesale and stuff, I mean, because you're trying to wholesale this deal, correct? Yes. Uh, you know, a deal really pretty much going to sell itself. I mean, there's only two reasons a deal is not going to sell. Either the marketing is bad, it's not in front of enough eyeballs, or the price is too high. That's really pretty much it. I mean, other than them two things, you know, people say, I need the JV. They even looking for people to JV. They, some, like I say, it's one of those two things. Or either, um, I mean, what are you going to do that's so much more magical than what they've been doing? Really? What are you talking about, the seller? To, I'm saying to sell this house, say you get this all done, right? You do this non-disclosure agreement with them. You sign this joint venture agreement that you're going to split this commission, however you decide to do it. And what are you going to do that's different from what they're doing? The market. I'm going to be doing a lot more market, I feel like. I mean, is this a company you're dealing with or just an individual? I think it's an individual. Because, see, you run into, you know, that's the thing, too, when you do this wholesale thing, you run into other wholesalers, and they start trying to do stuff, and they don't even know if it's a deal, and then they start joint venturing deals, and they go down this daisy chain. And, you know, I, I have questions for them. You know what I mean? Like, I would ask a seller, you know, how long have you had this under contract for? Or I just got it yesterday. Maybe we can do something. But if they had it for three weeks, I mean, it's probably a problem. You know what I mean? Why hasn't it sold already? That'd be my first thought. Anybody that's talking about JVN, why hasn't it sold already? Has it not been marketed properly? Because that's what I'm thinking, you know, on your part. How do you add value to this deal? Is it a deal already or is it just not being marketed? 
You know, is the price too high or is the marketing suck? It's, it's one of them two, really. See, that's what I had. That's what that, uh, we was going over because when we was texting, I kept trying to call him. But he was trying to play phone tag. So I just texted him, shot, shot him a text, and then he asked me or her, he was like, what type of uh, area you asked him out of Michigan? He said, is this her uh, zip codes? I was like, no, I'm uh, I sent him probably three zip codes, and then he's like, oh, you a cash buyer? You know, I just played it like, no, I'm a local uh, real estate investor, but I got cash, real cash buyers on the line, I'm just trying to sell a deal. Yeah. And they sent me over, the, it was a, they sent me the zip code to the house, but then when I was trying to, I'm like, I want to, I'm trying to do my uh, due diligence on the property, can I get the address? And it was like, before I do anything or, send my property to any uh, investor so they can, any other, any uh, other wholesaler, then I want to put it under NC, I want to put it under non-disclosure agreement. And that's right. where I got stuck at. I'm like, okay. Uh, I mean, I mean, I've done them before, but I mean, it, it just, you know, it's totally up to you. I mean, you got to read the language that's on that thing because I don't know what they're saying to agree to. Like I said, is it just for this deal? Is it for long term, for any deal we send you? You know, it's a lot of stuff when you start dealing with legal documents. Somebody got to review that stuff and see if it's even what it say it is, you know. And if, is it multiple pages? Is it one page? What is it? One page. Oh, okay. So, I mean, you can look over it. it don't look like, I mean, does it look like something you don't want to agree to? No, I read it. I, 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 under, I comprehended it real um, well. It was really just telling about, I guess, just did today. And uh, I, the questions that you were actually telling me to ask, that's what I had got stuck on because I didn't know what to ask. I had a bunch of little, tried to write my own little script with the ask of um, sellers and uh, buyers, but I just, I just need somebody to coach me through it so I can, or I don't find the right video or type of content. Right, right. So, you know, I mean, that's the thing, man. I mean, I have questions. You know, whoever I'm dealing with, I be asking questions, man. I mean, that's all. It keeps me out of trouble, keeps anybody I'm dealing with. We get a clear understanding of what's going on. I mean, I understand that the people are kind of being like, oh, I don't want to give the address. But people like that, man, I mean, if you send that non-disclosure thing back, if it looks okay, and they still playing around with addresses and stuff, I'll nix the deal, man. I don't even waste a lot of time on it. Now, the address is inside the agreement. The address is in the agreement with it. Mm -hmm. So that before I had signed it, you know, I looked it up. Uh, at first, they was uh, when we first, even before the property, they told me 65. I'm like, 65? I don't even know what the ARV is or, you know, what it looked like. And then the house would, I think it had paid for for about uh, 80, 97 on the market, or I think it's 70, yeah, 97 on the market. Mm hmm. On, so on, it's uh, worth, Zillow, so the it's ARV worth. is about 97 is what you're saying? On Zillow it is, and on Twilio it's uh, 80. Mm. And then what are they trying to sell it for? 65. Does it need work or anything, or is it just? They didn't even tell me none of that. Yeah, we on need that information, man. I'm an information hog. I'll be like, what? I need to know some stuff. I don't just jump into deals and be like, I don't know what's going on. You want to know what's going on, especially if you're going to partner with somebody on this limited partnership or this joint venture agreement, this JV deal, I want to know what's going on, you know, before I even, you know, expand my energy and resources and start marketing this deal out and, you know, cause it's time, you know, that's work to find a buyer and work, you know, to do this deal at all. It's work all together. They already know balling me at the 70, 30, even though I'm new, I'm not, I wasn't born yesterday. Exactly. So I'm like, so you said, ask the questions before I even do any signing, ask the question. I mean, you can do that uh, that non-disclosure if you feel like it's it's reasonable. They're not asking for nothing crazy, and then you know, and and I got a lot of questions. I mean, how do we how do we sell this house? If I got somebody, if my buyer want to see it today, how are we gonna get in this house? Is it on a lock box? You know, I need to know some stuff. Access. How are we gonna show this property? Because say I get three buyers want to come see it today. You know, how am I gonna show it? Then they're gonna act sneaky with that. Oh, well, let me see. And then you gotta look for them. I don't want to be chasing nobody down. When I come in to do the deal, I'm ready to do the deal. You know what I mean? Because you're working to make this money. I don't want nobody slowing me up. You know, and I understand, like, why they're doing the line disclosure because some people teach to do that. I don't do that. But some people teach to do it that way to protect yourself. And, you know, but, you know, I guess they're out of this mar out of your market as well because you said you're in Michigan or something, right? Mm-hmm. Michigan, Detroit, Michigan. And where are they at? They didn't even uh, say. They just said they market in Michigan. All yeah. of my, uh, in my areas. So I think they're doing virtual just as well. So you say this is a, a, a private person or you think it's a company? I think it's a 
I I, I can see real fast. I went on Craigslist and ended up finding it under uh, what was it? oh home uh, wanted homes. No, oh, okay. So yeah, I would go with uh, you know. It, so you do have the address now because it came up on the disclosure thing. Yeah, I checked it all out. I mean, and do it look like it's even a deal to you? Yeah, it's actually to be honest, I thought it was like two, three hours away. It's actually around the corner from. And then, have you done other research on it? Are they have they posted it out in other places or just on Craigslist? Just on Craigslist, is off market. Okay, because you know you can be borderline on market, off market. You know. Some people post stuff up on Zillow. I've been seeing some wholesalers getting real funky with it, posting straight up on Zillow. I'm like, dang, get, get beast mode with it. They going hard I don't with know it. know how to do the Zillow. I'm, I'm still dibbing and diving and little everything, but I have like the sub to all that. I, I have watched enough videos and I do want to just try the wholesaling. And once I, cause I'm a quick learner. I feel like once I get the wholesaling down, with, you know, just, just to, you know, I feel like the progress I got through within the three months, dang. So right. if I can learn that wholesaling by my birthday, which another three months, I should be on and then try to get in the sub too. Cause Michigan a gold mine. So I'm yeah. gonna shoot my power one another. And that's why I'm glad I actually got in the groups and it was sent to me. How old are you about to turn? How, what, how, you gonna, how old are you gonna be on your next birthday? 20. Oh, okay. You out here young and pushing. So you got all the energy. <laughs> Exactly. Exactly. Ain't nobody on what I'm on. I'm thinking five, ten years from now, I'm trying to create that cash flow. Because I've been watching the videos and then the, um, the walkthroughs. And I has, I, uh, really, I've been walking all, I've been watching all the walkthroughs. So I've been keeping up on the content. I'm okay. just trying to get this this first deal done so I can keep it pushing. Because once I get this and done, then I'll know the steps. But right. my step is, if I sign this agreement, is that the agreement to the deal? Do I send over mines or I don't send over mines? And I, you know, I'm just confused. That's right. So the biggest thing, man, and just uh, just a word of advice. I mean, you can do these type of deals with JVs and work with all these middlemen, but you got to remember, at some point, there's too many cooks in the kitchen, and you got all these people in the middle and problems. I mean, stuff can come up. I'm not saying it's good or bad, but you have to keep that in the back of your mind. You're dealing with him a seller, he might be JVing with somebody else, somebody else might be in the middle of that, and then it's some, you know, who's the owner of the house? You know, I, you know, it's not like it's a secret, so that's why they making you, uh, want you to sign that non-disclosure. So, you know, if it looks like it makes sense, I will go ahead and sign it and uh, see what you can do with that deal. But in reality, I try to get directly to the seller, man. You cut all these middlemen out, all these people you don't want to be looking at and dealing with, you got control of the deal. You know, if you know you had it locked up with a seller yourself, you don't have to go through all this. You see what I'm saying? It's extra problems. Because like I said, when it comes time to show the house, to go back and evaluate, to do whatever inspections. I mean, you got a lot of stuff to go to that you ain't even got to yet. And if it's giving you problems already, what they going to do when it's time to take real action? Because say you do mess around and find a buyer for the house. I don't want to have no problems when trying to show it and getting paperwork right and then find out they ain't really got it under contract. You know, all kind of stuff. You know what I mean? It's just oh, loopholes man. and layers of crap. I don't need that happening. I just trying to keep my head above water so I won't, <laughs> if I get into this or a deal or something, I won't go underwater and then I'm not going to know how to get out. Yeah, so so what my advice is, so if that non-disclosure looks good, go ahead and sign off on that if it looks good. Um, if it does, uh, if that's good for you, you can go ahead and uh, have them send you a copy of the contract they have because you need to know what you even are signing. You see what I'm saying? When, what do they have it under contract for? I, I need to know what's the real thing. Cause you don't even know if they have it under contract. You got people out here marketing houses don't have no paperwork on it. That stuff's illegal. You know what yeah. I mean? And you don't want to get caught up in the middle of that. No, I do. We don't need no extra problems with this brown skin. <laughs> no, it's already hard out here now. Okay, I want to uh, clarify something. So I went on Zillow, and it has said nine hundred month. You know the mortgage. I mean not the mortgage, the uh, monthly rent. But when I went on Twilio, um, uh, True Search. Uh, when I went on True Search, uh, I mean, two people that said I forgot what, the, what it was called. Though. But when I went on Zillow, it was telling me the monthly uh, rent. But when I went on uh, different other uh, sites, it was telling me the uh, ARV. Yeah. <clears throat> so on Zillow, they do tell you what they think it's worth, and that's just the average of all the houses in the area compiled, and it really don't, it never really add up. That's not really the right way to run your ARV. I do have a video up on YouTube, and I think it's in the Woke Real Estate Investors Group uh, that actually show you how to run your own ARV by square footage. 
and uh, things like that. It's a whole breakdown of that. So I wouldn't really go off Zillow numbers. You need to do your own numbers and learn how to evaluate a property. When you get an address, you should know how to break it down and say, all right, this is worth this much. If it was fixed up in 2019 standards in perfect condition, brand new ceiling fans, everything good, carpet paint, whatever else the house need. You know, so you need to know how to do that. That's something you just got to learn yourself. On any address, I should be able to give you this address. You should be able to find out this information about it. Most people use the MLS. You can use other websites like the ones you just named to gather some of that information, but I wouldn't go off of that stuff, what they say on there, just off the face value because they don't really do it the right way. Okay, are you familiar with uh, our deal machine? I also use deal machine, and I found a couple of absentee owners in my area, probably like eight of them. Oh, okay. But, but, I don't know how to, uh, my bad for cutting you off. I didn't know how to, uh, I skip traced them. I, I, REI Pro, it's an app, but I just didn't know how to uh, talk to them. I ain't have a script or nothing. I didn't want to be on there and uh, mumbling, jumbling, and I don't know what I'm asking. Yeah, I mean, so when you go on Deal Machine, I don't know uh, if you do go on Deal Machine, you can enter that promo code WOKE, W O K E, and you'll get free deal credits. Did you do that? Yeah, I already did that. All right, so you, you already use it up quick too, huh? Uh-huh, I started that on last week. So, yeah, so what I would say, um, when you're using Deal Machine, I use it more so to gather properties. I don't necessarily send everybody mail right out the gate. So say you go and find 20 houses, right? Mm -hmm. Come back home, then look them up on that site like you were just using truepeoplesearch.com. Get their phone number and call them first. See if you can reach them on the phone. Then if you don't reach them, send them mail. Don't just send people mail just because I found they was absentee. Try to reach out to them on the phone first because that'll save you some money on your marketing. If you can't okay. reach them that way, then, you know, try something else like mail. That's that's one word of advice because you can run that bill way up, sending them things out on uh, any any kind of mail, any kind of marketing. And that's cheaper to call somebody than to send them mail. It costs you zero cents to do like this. <laughs> See what I'm saying? Zero cents exactly. to do like this. <laughs> exactly. So, okay. okay. And then as far as, um, you know, script them and, and stuff, I mean, I don't know if you've been on uh, my website, wokerealestate.com. I do have a package on there that gives you everything you need to do a wholesale deal. All of the purchase and sales agreements, the assignment agreement, um, any JV agreements, if you're working with another wholesaler or another individual or party on a property, it's got, um, you know, some guidelines and some scripts. It's got a one page questionnaire on there. I just filled out a fresh one today. It basically has all the questions on it that I would ask a seller before I even make any offer. Because like I say, I'm a uh, question asker before I even spit out any numbers. I always try to find out as much information as possible because you don't know. You don't know what the situation is. And if the numbers, you know, if they're going to be good for you, they're going to be good for you. But if you don't know a way to help that seller, you, you ain't doing that no way. So you got to know exactly what their problems are, how you can, how to help them. And if there's any room on numbers, that's going to work itself out anyway. But uh, yeah, I would definitely suggest getting that if you don't know exactly what to ask them or just watch all these videos. I mean, I put out enough of them. But, you know, if you want the real thing, like I say, go to WokeRealEstate.com. and got a package on there. It says Chris Monroe Wholesale Package. Everything you need right there, real simple, real sweet, and one-page agreements. Everything you need to make it happen. All right. It sounds all right. But by any chance, how long have you been in, in wholesaling? How long have I? Yeah. Oh, I closed my first deal August of uh, 2018. So about, what's that, seven months ago, eight months ago? So I'm, pre okay. well, I'm pretty new myself, but I closed like 15 wholesale deals and uh, about uh, four different terms deals. So, you know, I, I hit the ground running fast, but you know, I study hard, just like you're doing right now. Just keep doing that, keep getting your education up because that's what's gonna help you move above everybody in your market and anybody else that's doing real estate because you know something that somebody else don't know. And like I said, you take that position, even if you do know, still take the position of I'm asking questions to know what's going on. So you can make educated decisions other than just jumping out there, I'll give you 30,000. Well I, well, I only wanted 20 for it, and you didn't offer the bigger number than they wanted. You see what I'm saying? So you don't want to be in that boat. You want to get your information right and before you start presenting offers to people and stuff. That's how I do it. So. All right. Okay, I got a good question, then, now that you say that. So let's say I was this JV deal, knowing that they have already have a firm price, which is 65 but I get to ask them, you know, about uh, the roofing or what's the repairs, and they tell me this. So I can negotiate that before I even try to go market it? You can. You can find out all the information you want before you spend your time on it. I would do that automatically on any deal. If it's a JV deal or a deal that I have under contract, I need to know what's going on. What's the numbers? What's some pictures, some video? Give me something. I need some information because that's what you're doing, marketing that information to the next person. And they looking at it like, ooh, that look juicy. I want to buy. But if you don't have nothing to market to go off of to say, look, this is a great deal 
great school district. The roof is only two years old and all these other good selling points. What you selling? You see what I'm saying? So you want to know that before you start spending your energy on it. Okay, I was confused off of that because I thought that JV did. I did my part. They did theirs. But your part is still to market the deal. How are you going to market the deal if you don't know what's going on? What are you marketing? <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. Okay. So I'm going to ask, I'm going to talk to them, get the contract. All right. Because that's what I was really just trying to go for. I was trying to look at the JV deal because I tried to get the easy way out. And while I'm at home and I got a lot on my hand, I can get more in the marketing. And, but I don't know how to exactly find the JV deal. So let me ask you this. What, what are you planning to do to market this deal? Say everything works out with your non-disclosure and they make it make sense and it looks like it's a good deal. What are you going to do to market this deal? I was going to post it on either the Facebook group to connect the investors or um, in one of the Facebook groups. Is that all you were going to do? Yeah. And then I was just going to go as I think as I go. Because you know, it's a whole lot of other ways to market a deal. And so that's why I say it's two reasons why a deal on sale. Either that price too high or the marketing sucks. You don't want to be in that bucket of people that with the marketing that sucks because you can't sell it. You ain't going to be able to get rid of it. Okay. You see what you I'm saying? Marketing, you mean posting ads about it and putting it on different uh, social medias? Yeah, whatever you need to do. Go to real estate meetup groups. Uh, you know, Go to meetup.com, see what other meetups. Because you say once you got a deal in the contract, you got something to market now. You got something to talk about. Hey, I got this house over here in uh, West Lancaster or whatever you said earlier over here, and it's got this, 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 and this, and we're asking this much for it. You, you know anybody may be interested in it? They say, oh, I might be wanting to be interested in it. So you got to build your network. You got to build your buyer's list by actually getting on the ground. You can do the internet stuff. That's great. I say, yes, do that. But remember, everything you're doing on the internet, they can do the same thing. You're not adding really any value to them at that point, unless you're on a site they don't know about or something silly, you know what I mean? So you gotta make sure you get all the buyers that really buy in that area to know that, hey, this house is available and here's the deal. Does it look like a deal to you? Do you wanna make an offer on it? That's how you're gonna make your money. Exactly, okay, okay, that's talking about, right? Really, okay, then. I yeah, so I would go to some real estate meetups, some, um, you know, you could post it up, Craigslist, Facebook, offer up, let go, all the internet sites. Um, you know, you could do stuff and don't put the address. You just put a description about the house, fixer upper over here, needs a little bit of work, you know, asking price this, perfect wholesale deal wow. for this much. So you give them generic information, just basically what the dude just did to you to find that you found. You're doing the same thing, but then when somebody contacts you, you vet them and see if they're really a cash buyer. Same thing he just did with you. They say, oh, yeah, great. So here's the address. Boom. They look at it. Do they do diligence? Yeah, we like to see it. Get them in there and, you know, try to get the deal done. Once you, you know, it's, it's some little stuff, like I say, to go along. But a lot of that, you know, is in that wholesale package that you can get on WokeRealEstate.com. Okay. Okay. For my last, my, one last question. What Only one you? last question? I need at least two more well, questions out of you. Okay. I got, I, got, <laughs> I got a whole bunch. I just didn't want probably, you probably a busy man. I had something else going on. A couple more other calls. I've been trying to get contact with you though for a little bit, so I'm actually kind of happy. So I, that I gotta got to talk to you, pick your brain a little bit. But uh, so I actually um got a little mentor, and he sent me probably like two lists, but I haven't even went over it. I skip tracing it. When I skip trace it, and he already didn't got everything, ARV, square feet, all that. And all I got to do is find a number. When I find a number and I call them and I, you know, talk them, uh, get a little information and then I talk about the property. Is at least option the same thing as a, as a wholesale deal? Uh, not necessarily. A lease option is a more advanced strategy where, you know, you're going to be staying in the deal and it's a long-term commitment between okay. a buyer and a seller. So that's something totally different from wholesaling. Wholesaling just straight up, I'm going to sell this agreement to somebody else and they're going to get, I'm going to get my money and go on down the street. So, you know, that's two different animals. You know, are okay. you coming across okay. somebody say they have a lease option or what, what, what okay. made lease option come lease up? Option. option to purchase. Option to purchase. Yeah, that's all something totally different from a cash wholesale deal. All is something totally different. Those are terms. Two ways to buy a house. Cash or terms, generally. 
generally in this investor world, you got either you're buying it for cash, somebody gonna bring some cash, may not be your cash, maybe some end buyer's cash in California, Florida, I don't care where they at, they got cash, they wire it in and get the deal. Uh, and then you also got, you know, you can buy terms, buy on terms. Okay. Or you can go get a loan and go through the mortgage and have them pull your whole uh, bad teeth out the back of your mouth and everything before they say yes Ooh. or no. <laughs> That's a little bit advanced for me right there. Yeah, so, you know, just, just basic wholesaling is just straight there. We're buying a house for cash, nothing more than that. Okay, then. I pretty much got the little, the real um, ins and the outs of it. It's just this little deal, though, was pressuring me. So I didn't got to talk to you. I'm going to try to uh, go through with it and see what happens after that. The marketing, it was really the wording. I didn't know how to do it because, you know, the address, knowing that that's a non-disclosure and they saying that I can't share it. I didn't know if I was, you know, how I'm supposed to market it then if I can't share it. So is that what the non-disclosure agreement says, that you cannot share the address? Uh, no, it's saying I can't share any. Uh, basically, I won't go back doing them, man. They want uh, the buyer won't try to go market or try to uh, sell it to cut them out. Go back to the seller and go make a new agreement with the seller. Like, oh, I heard you want to sell your mm -hmm. house. Them guys messing up, and I can save the day. It's people to do that stuff. So I mean, I understand why they're doing it. So yeah, I would just do that. Like I say, make sure if that makes sense, go ahead do your due diligence on that property. Like I said, there's a video. I might try to tag it or send it to you uh, where you can uh, see it. There's a video that shows you to find out how to find out the ARV for your house. And uh, go from there, you know, so you can see if the numbers even make sense, if it's even a deal, because it may not be a deal for a cash buyer, per se, because we don't know that. I don't know all the numbers and stuff. So you got to do your homework on that part to make sure it's even a deal. Once you say, yes, this looks like it could be a deal or it is a deal. Now we go ahead and market that bad boy out, try to get somebody on it. Do you have an email list going as well or anything for buyers or? Mm, yeah, my regular email that I use for everything. Yeah, so I got a video on that as well. I don't, I don't know if you've been on my YouTube channel on Chris Monroe STL. I got a whole roster of just information, man. Information overload. I mean, I, you probably already seen that anywhere. Anyway, anywhere you look, it's a bunch of information. But I do have a video on there as well that breaks down exactly how to build your buyers list through MailChimp and add them. And it's free. It don't cost you no money. You get the email address, you add it on there, and you just build it over time. Build it over time. Grow it up. And before you know it, you got all these people that's supposedly on your buyers list. You make a little email. Snap one thing out, it blasts out to a thousand people, however many people on your list. And it's like, it makes everything easier than saying, hey, hey, you want to buy a house? Hey, you want to buy a house? Hey, you want to buy a house? You know, okay. it, it just kind of streamlines and puts you on systems. That's what helped me scale up faster. Put a lot of good systems in place. I'm all about a good system. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to get to. So right, right. To be... Okay, then that's on, right. and that's on YouTube. Yeah, it's on my YouTube, Chris Monroe STL. I might send it to you if I find it, but uh, it's on my YouTube channel. I got about, I don't know, 40 videos, 50 videos, maybe more on real estate alone. The, it just breaks down a lot of stuff, man. I give a lot of free information out, so I just try to help people out. But like I said, if you want the paid content, the good stuff where I just answer every little intricate detail, that's on WokeRealEstate.com. But it's a bunch of free stuff. You can learn it for free if you want to. No, I'd rather just put the puzzle together. Well, that's on you. You got plenty of time. <laughs> Thank you. But shoot, Dan, I appreciate you taking a little bit of your time and talking to me. All right, cool, if cool. I can, though, if I can, if I could uh, have any more questions later down the line, if you were to give me a little permission to shoot you some text or something, you know, in your, your pri uh, private message. I, I also, I mean, so wait a minute, let me ask you this. So you said you got a mentor. What's the deal with that? Are they well, helping you? Really know. I'm just asking, asked, what are they doing? I already know. He just asked me, uh, he said, shoot, if you needed a mentor, I can uh, coach you, do whatever. And then I was like, shoot, yeah, I need a little help. Well, I need a help. I don't, I don't want to try to go through this alone. So was, so why did you not reach out to him on this topic here? He hasn't been contacting me. He's been reading my message the last two, three days. So Oh, he gave you the I'm cold gonna... shoulder. Oh, man, you done bugged him too much. See what you done did? Um, I'm, I throw on my average though, so I got my have questions. Yeah, I start somewhere. I, yeah. I ain't want to question them too much, darn bugaboo. Yeah, and that's why I say, you know, everything you would need for this whole real estate business is at wokerealestate.com. I actually just released a new uh, coaching program on there as well. So I mean, and I actually respond to people, as you can tell. I don't do that. To people. No, yeah. You know, we just try to make everything easy. But you know, uh, hopefully this all helps you out there. Will I'll talk to you later. All right. Thank you. And uh, one last question, though. So if I was to put, um, let's say, the property on Woke, you think it'd be some cash buyers in my area? So on the Woke Real Estate Investors Group on Facebook, we do not post deals in there. 
That's for strictly theory. learning. And there's no buyers in there that's going to buy your house. So okay, I didn't know. Okay. that group is just for, you know, networking, you know, meet up with other people in your town, learning, you know, growing. But if we start letting people put a bunch of deals in there, how much junk will we have in there? That ain't even deals. Matter of fact, forget posting deals, posting things that ain't deals in there thinking they're gonna, that it is a deal. I would prefer not to have that. I'd rather have a better learning environment where we're not flooding up the timeline with junk. Exactly. Okay, then. So it's all for learning. All right, that'll work. Thanks a lot. All right, all right. You too. Right. So there we go. Wait, this is gonna be on YouTube? Nope. You in the woke real estate investors group right now. You live. <laughs> all right, dear. All right, all right. Do what you do, be who you be, and I'll see you before you, you see, see you. <laughs>